So um, the band forms, the band explodes. I mean, it wasn't a slow burn. It seems like a like an explosion. And it's, you know, it's... it's it was the second record. Th- there's two kinds of music. There's a kind of music where people go, oh, this is a good song. And then there's the music <clears throat> where it, it captures people and it moves them and they purge and they have all these feelings and you speak for me, which, which becomes the movement part versus the kind of one hit wonder stuff. And I don't know if you guys... N- you, you, well, you knew what was happening, I'm sure, when it was happening, but was it overwhelming at the beginning? Well, it's interesting. I've been talking about this recently that, you know, um, so the the record that really broke us commercially was Tox- Toxicity, our second record. Our first record was an amazing kind of live representation of the band, and that's how Rick Rubin, our producer, wanted to show oh, it. Oh, Rick as, Rubin. Yeah. So Rick produced all our records, actually. Um and so, uh, and from day one, we were on his American label. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so, uh, it's interesting. So, for the first record, we just toured, 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 built a proper base. Um, we did a bunch of Ozfest, toured with Slayer, toured with different bands. And for the second record, uh, there were more, uh, I guess, radio friendly songs, if you will. And it just, you know, it, it definitely hit. And at the, though at the time, instead of like, you know, you would think as artists, we're like, wow, this is like huge. This is amazing. This is changing our lives. Like, we weren't worried about that. We were stressed out. And the reason we were stressed out is is a number of reasons. Uh, it coincided with 9-11. The week that 9-11 happened is when Toxicity was released. Mm. And um, among other things, I had written an article called Understanding Oil. Mm-hmm. to Try to understand what's going on with this, you know, talking about U.S. foreign policy. And, you know, I've always been... Uh, a, you know, a researcher and a student of geopolitics. Um, and so just trying to understand what's going on, and that blew up in our face, of course, giving opinions at the time. Oh, right. You know? Um, well, kind of in the vein of Bill Maher, when Bill Maher took to his show and said, uh, you know, you can call those terrorists what you want, but you can't call them cowards. They were in right. the plane that went to the tower. That was, ugh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we yeah. just had Third rail, bad news. zero... There was zero tolerance for zero tolerance. anything Dixie other than chicks. yeah yeah, you know, yeah. Every, Madonna. We um, had n- no tolerance as a country for cool. any of that. Yeah, I mean, there were artists that that spoke, tried to speak about what was going on, like um, um, balanced wise, but it was tough. Anyway, that that was one of it. And then with the release of our record, we held a live um, show. We we were going to hold a live show behind the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. There was like a huge parking lot, so. And we were going to do a free show. So there were people there camped out from the day before. And then apparently, you know, the fire marshal closed it down because there were too many people. Right. And they wouldn't let us play the show. We were there. Um, and this is a really interesting story because um, we were there ready to play, but they wouldn't let us. They said the fire marshal closed it down. And, um, and I said, well, what if we go at least announce and play a few shows and say, you know, it's closed down, so you can't really, we can't really finish the show. We'll do another show later for you all. They said, no, you can't do that. The police will arrest you if you try to go to the stage. And we're like, okay, well, are they going to announce that, you know? Like nobody announced. So I said, so I called the guys over and I said, let's get arrested even better. <laughs> you know, like, fuck it, right? Let's, let's do this. And then my lawyer came in and was like, you know, everyone here is going to sue you. You know, and I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe not. But that turned into a riot because actually no one got up and announced, not the promoter, whoever was putting on the event, etc. No one announced that it wasn't going to happen. They literally pulled our banner down after people being there for, you know, probably Camping staying out. overnight. Yeah. And there was like 10, 15,000 people there. And it just all, all hay- mayhem broke loose. The hell did they think was going to happen? And tell That's, anybody what was going on. And then they blamed it on us, saying the band never showed up. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Um, so we had to kind of, our manager got on TV and news and explaining that, look, we were there, and the fire marshal closed it down. We couldn't go, et cetera. But uh, that was interesting. So this is the release of the record for me, <laughs> the stress, this mm-hmm. anguish, seeing our fans beaten up by clubs on police. Cops on horses. horses. Cops on horses and, and then and then death threats and all sorts of shit from the um, the statement I made and had to go on Howard Stern and, and defend my words, if you will, um, by still being honest, but being kind of, you know yeah, the guys pulled me aside. I remember we we're in Colorado, about to start a tour the week after nine eleven, we're on fucking tour. 
right? right? You know, meanwhile, you, George Bush, you got TV, like the red signal, the gr- ye- yellow signal, terrorist threat, be careful, large yeah, events. We're, in, we're doing large events chart. every day. Right, you know? right. And it was fucking stressful. So when people go, toxicity, how did it feel when you <laughs> released it? The brain? I'm like, I was, it was the most stress I've had in my life, you know? 